I do enjoy your positivity, but I interview a lot of dark people too who look at the glass half empty view of the world and they talk about the Aquarian age. Now Aquarius is an air sign. You know, it's not obvious to everybody that it's an air sign, but it is. And they talk about the elite, the World Economic Forum, what they're trying to do to us. And a lot of the control measures that are being implemented now are air-based. Weaponry is drones. We're talking surveillance. We're talking central bank digital currencies, things that are very airy. They're not physical. They're not really rooted in anything. But internet-based control systems, smart cities, 5G, all this stuff they're trying to implement. Will they fail? Maybe. But I don't know if I... I want to get where you are. I want to see the Aquarian Age as a positive, clearly next golden age level thing. But I just don't know because I see what the darker side of things are and I see it implemented and I'm like, I don't know. 10 more years? I think it's going to be pretty rough. So I have the very opposite view of that, and, I, and, I, and, that's, and that's okay. And I like that you brought that in because a lot of people have that mindset, and it would be very good to explain that a little bit for people. Please. The first thing to very much lay out here is that we are not alone in this and that we could just destroy ourselves and we would disappear. We got to get out of that mindset. That is like a silly controlling system of us, that we are randomly just here and that whatever we decide to do with some madman on a, on a nuclear weapon, that that's it. It doesn't work that way. I'm telling you, it does not work that way at all. Every ancient culture around the world has told us that our path and what we're doing here is, is critically important to the entire universe. It's not a randomization thing that we're here as a survival of fittest and we could just in one moment, boom, there's something goes off and we're all gone. That actually is one of the most controlling mindsets that we have right now. It's what locks us in fear and that any moment something's going to happen. We need to, we need to get rid of that. We need to cleanse it and we need to push it away. It is what is controlling us. I'm telling you, it is what is controlling our mindsets. Imagine this instead. Imagine that each age is governed by an energy throughout time, every age. And what that means is the earth has a wobbling of the procession of the equinox. It wobbles on its axis, but it, it has a slight tilt to it. So it faces a different star constellation for 2,100 years every time. That's what the Zodiac really is. And those are the energies associated with that. Now, those energies associated with each age dictates what that age will be. Bar none. It does not matter, okay? We have to adhere to whatever the energy that dominates that age is. It is what will dominate it. Pisces was dominated by a negative, warlike, destructive energy of disconnecting us from source and who we really are, okay? Okay. Don't look at Pisces as anything to do with where we're going. That's like silly. It's like looking at, it's almost like if you're, imagine you're like in a car ride. Okay. Let's use that as an analogy right now. Okay. You're going on a car trip and you're driving along and right away on the car trip, you get a flat tire. You're like, oh my God. Right. And you're, you're putting the tire together. You drive down the road and then like a rock hits your window and then it gives a huge crack in it. You're like, the rest of this trip is going to be horrible. <laughs> is it though? Is it? Why are you basing it on just that? You have a whole, you have like a week left, right? You haven't even, you just started. You haven't even left your state yet. And you have a whole week of this, all these adventures. But because a couple bad things happened earlier on, you're already like judging the entire rest of the trip. That's us. We're in that journey together. And it, we need to look past these controlling systems that have kept us in fear-based systems that we're going to annihilate and destroy ourselves. I'm not saying all those negative things don't exist. You just mentioned they do. And it's not about pretending they don't. What it's what it's about though, is not giving it any energy. I love to talk about it. I'm like, I could talk about it until the cows come home, but it doesn't affect me at all. I give myself nothing from it. It's almost like just kind of it's like just objective talking about it. And you, mm -hmm. your, your energy field is so strong though, that you're like, I know that that stuff is there, but it's not affecting me on a physical way. And the fear based systems of it, the negativity of it, it's like I have a for shield around me and it's not going to affect me. We need to start doing that. It's not about living a, the, a world in rosy colored glasses, but it's about protecting our energy field so that others don't dictate how we feel. Now, all those negative things you mentioned, I want to comment on. 
because people are probably thinking, looking at this and be like, well, that's great and all you're saying, but what about this? I encourage people to look into what's called the fifth prophecy of the Maya. The fifth prophecy of the Maya talks all about these ages. And I mean, look at the Maya and the Kali Yuga cycles. They, they mapped these out. They already knew. They're like, oh, this is going to be a golden age. And then about you get knocked down to a, an, an iron age, and then you go up to a bronze age and silver, and then back to gold. Like, those are inherently built into the system. Think about it for a second. If we had a golden age, when we did, an incredible golden age, and then we had disasters come through, and then we were wiped back to an iron age, that's exactly what history has done. It's, it's identical to what the Yugas would tell us. That is exactly what happened at the Younger Dryas 12,000 years ago, is we almost had to like start over again. We lost almost everything we had. And by the time we got to 6,000 years ago, we were trying to rebuild what we had already known long before that. And so back to the negative stuff, because I didn't forget. <laughs> the fifth prophecy of the Maya talks about how these systems of control that are going to be implemented through um, through controlling th people through money, controlling through th people through war, materialism, that when the age of Aquarius came, that that energy would die and that mm -hmm. it literally would not be able to be sustainable anymore. But the transition of energy in between ages is where it's the most messy. That's the most messy of all. It's, it's like the idea, I think, if you, um, if something bad happens, with someone you know or something and right away it's just like horrible but then if like a little ways down the road like you have time to think you you can then you meet you see them again right and they're like i'm really sorry that i reacted like that to you you're like it's okay i know you're upset we're just going through humanity is going through the dark night of its soul right now as it goes into this age of light because you can't like carl Jung says there's no coming to light without darkness and pain first you have to go through that and and get rid of it you have to deal with it before you can come to a higher place that's what humanity is doing right now we're, we're like taking care of all this these things that we still have to take care of like um race and where people live and nationalism and these silly stupid concepts like we're all humans on the earth this is the dumbest thing in the world we're all people yeah. right we're all people you know actually that was a real i want to bring this up if anybody's ever seen a, the movie No Country for Old Men, mm -hmm. great movie, right? There's actually a line in there that's really profound. If anybody's ever, if it remembers it, they're talking um, at one point about people that just got killed. The sheriff um, is talking to, to another sheriff about that, and they were they were saying like, "Oh, these Me the Mexicans were um, were killed and gunned down," and he, Tommy Lee Jones in that in that says a brilliant line. Do you remember this? He says. Yeah. No, the real question is, at what point did they stop being Mexicans? <laughs> like when they're dead, they're people. Yeah, yeah. They're people. They're just people. And I love that line. If That's anyone line. didn't pick up on that, it's actually really beautiful because you consider someone like, a, oh, they're, they're like he said that in a connotation. But then once they're dead, they're just they're people that are just dead. Yeah, that's and they're a good just line. people. It's a really, it's really uh, an interesting way to look at all of this. Is that we have this opposition against groups around the world and others. Oh, you're from this country or this country, but we're literally all humans from Earth. Mm -hmm. And it, and that's obviously one of the things that we're working through right now with this dark night of our soul. So those controlling systems, fluoride in our water and food is all horrible and contaminated and. It's just the dark night of our soul with corporations and, and, and companies and, and controlling systems that are all flailing for control and failing right now, failing, failing on, every, on every level. And one last thing, the failing, the freaking out is this. That's just it. It's like all they have left. And so that's what I want people to get their minds in. It's a franticness, but there's nothing they can do. They can't destroy us. We can't destroy ourselves. We're part of something that's so that's such on a higher level and guided by so many that here that I guarantee you that no matter what we go through, and there will be some challenges between now and the next t 10 years, mm -hmm. guarantee that what we go through will not be this mass elimination of the population of Earth and this complete destruction. It's, it's not. This is the one, this is the version that's supposed to make it. Okay. And we're supposed to learn all the lessons from our predecessors because all of those ancient structures and the knowledge they knew that they were wiped out, they were just, a, they were like a sacrifice so that we could make it. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Well, you make a really compelling case. So 
my thing is that I don't like the doom and gloom. I don't like to scare people that we're all going to get destroyed. So I tend to say, well, disengage. You know, you don't have to get yeah. involved with a lot of that stuff. You should maybe move outside of the cities, maybe start planting your own food, take yes. care of your family that way. And then it doesn't really matter what other people do or what the system might want to do. I mean, it has to get really bad if they're going out to individual homes and like destroying farms. It's not won't. really going to happen. It's not going to happen. Right. So my concern has been like when I was younger, it was all about we got to wake everybody up. We got to fix this whole thing. And I just eventually learned like, man, you are not going to change other people. You can lead a horse to water. You can't make them drink, as they say. Exactly. Well, no, it's true. if we're going through this phase and it's messy right now, sometimes these are very long arcs. These arcs are way longer than a human lifespan. When are we going to get to that tipping point where this energy that dominates people, the education system that has dumbed them down, the whole fake history we're deconstructing that people take as the gospel truth. I mean, yeah. these things are embedded in people. And I just don't know if I see a mass awakening. Now, if there's an energy shift, that's something that's foreign to me. It's that's never happened. To think about it's okay. not what the old was. It's what is the new, not well, the old. Well, how long do we have to wait before the tipping point? Is it <laughs> in, in our life? For this. <laughs> is it in um, our lifetime? You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it is it 200 uh, okay, years from now? Way. Is it 20 years from now? Let's put it this way. In, within the next five years, our entire education system will completely change. All of those things are going to start re, being re, uh, redesigned, redeveloped. Within 10 years, I think our world will look very different than it is today. 10 years. I mean... I think that us as humans will be literally like a different human then. We'll be, we'll be a human that is a more mature human, a more conscious human. Um, those humans that want to serve that old dark world of the past, they're going to move along with their soul and die. Because guess what? We're mortal. And we can't. And those controllers and those old men that are up there pulling the strings, they're all going to die. And that means that, and I say that in the most positive way possible, because it means that new energy can come in with new ascended beings and souls that are here that aren't governed by those old things of the past. Look at even I even I even actually have a lot of optimism for our youth today because perhaps like they are bombarded by social media and they're obsessed with their phones and all this stuff, but they're also like quick, they're fast, they're like multidimensional now. They're playing video games all the time. They're they're on their they're listening to music at the same time. They're trying to drive. That actually is creating like this this quick this quickening. This, these right. technologies quickening our minds to move faster and be quicker. It is, it is raising our frequency, but all we need now is we need to combine it with our reaching, returning to balance within nature, returning to understanding our role in the cosmos and our inherent um, divinity within us. Those are all coming together. And I know that sounds like fluffy terms to some, but the age, the ages of energy don't lie. They're defined. You have to go from a negative age to a positive age, and you can't go the other way around because that's how duality and, and polarity are constant laws in the universe. We have to stop pretending that it's random. These are constant laws that are constants for a reason because they're part of how the story is supposed to go. And that just simply means that Pisces was only that dark because of how positive and light Aquarius is going to be. Mm -hmm. It has to. That's have the way it's been designed. I have that in my notes. I've heard you say in a nutshell that uh, our situation boils down to a cosmic play with predetermined cycles yes. aligned with the ebb and flow of energy and the powers that be play into it. And then you That's did it. say the That's darker it. an age is, the brighter the next age will be. Well, what about this predetermined word for the cycle? Yeah, is this you like Anunnaki that, huh? predetermined? Well, the, my favorite term that they use that I talk about all the time is that this concept of ordainers of destinies and, and time lords, basically by protecting something here. Now, I cannot emphasize that enough. Nearly every, every ancient mural at a Mesopotamia, especially the new ones that we're looking at, these symbols from like Ionis at Lake Vaughan, they all show nearly the same thing. It's this concept of these celestial counterparts to us, we'll call them, much higher up, much more powerful. Um, and we're like the, the little children of them that are trying to learn and figure out who we are. We don't really, we like forgot all our gifts. You know, we don't understand most of it, but imagine that there's a, that, that, th those ages are determined way ahead of time and that it's more about 
individuals and energies playing roles for specific points in time as it as it ebbs and flows along its way. Okay, and that everything that we've gone through, everything in humanity, every war, every struggle, every innovation, every miracle, every moment we've had is basically this great tapestry that's leading us to something. It's all timed at a specific moment because it had to happen, it had to happen. Right. If someone, uh, if someone, um, assassinated Hitler, somebody would have taken his place. It's this idea that like those things are constants and they just have to happen. Can you believe it, people? A video clip and a peek into how that sweet THC sausage is made. For some people, I'm sure it's nice to put a face to the name. So I started making clips that are a little more YouTube friendly than the full show tends to be. Get the full show on any podcasting platform. I prefer to keep it audio only so we have a more decentralized distribution for a controversial show. And also so I can edit out the ums and ahs and barking dogs and all the things that happen when a person records in their home environment. And then if you really like the show, you can sign up for THC Plus and instead of one hour interviews, you get the full two hour interview for just eight bucks. I think that's a better deal, more of a win-win than asking you to support the show by booking a therapy session or buying generic Viagra. It's getting weird out there, folks. So just go to the HiresideChats.com or click the link at the top of any set of show notes and all your wildest dreams will come true. All right? All right. The Higher Side Chat Show, Greg Carwood and Company.